Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett and this is the Ramble and it goes on from now until now until my cock grows. Oh no, no, until the uh, the uh, well the cock doesn't grow at midnight, does it? At midnight uh, Eastern time. Hey everybody, how are you? Uh, I have no guests tonight. It's just you and me. Okay, and uh, uh, I, uh, I usually have a re- something pre-recorded here that we run, and then I can go out and I can take a dump and I can get my coffee uh, and I can, uh, you know, do a whole bunch of things. But no, 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 that's not what, what, what's going on, okay? So um, uh, the, I got to tell you, I... Uh, um, uh, let me tell you something interesting here. I'm going to do something interesting while we're while we're talking here, and and uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you what I go through every day. Okay. Now, right now, uh, let's see. Has he done it yet? Uh, no, he hasn't done it yet. Uh, 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 Damien is posting his show on the playlist. That's the thing you hear 24/7. When you go to gabnet.net and then you hit the play button and you listen to the programming, he's placing his program there. He has just done it, okay? So that means that I can go get it. Now, I'm going to show you the process I have to go through, and I want you to realize that this is just one of the little pieces of the process, okay? So I go over uh, to where... um, um, uh, Let's see here. I go over to where he's just put that, okay, and I find it, and it's a file. It's uh, EX190321, okay, and then I put it down into this program called Fission. I drag it down into this program called Fission, and then it says Artist, and I have to put in Damien Chaplin, Chaplin, and then uh, the next thing I put in is the exchange, exchange. Then I have to get a picture from up on, up here to put into the into the uh, uh, into this file, so that when it's on Roku, you see his logo. Okay, so I have to put that here. Okay, now I have to take that and I have to save that. Okay. And I file save as, and of course it's all that, and then it puts it there, okay? Then I go over to GabNet, uh, into a file called GabNet, and I um, I can get rid of uh, that. I don't need that, okay? Um, and I take um, the exchange that I just made, and I put it over on the uh, other machine. Oh, what happened? Oh, okay, replace, all right, okay, replace, all right, I did that, okay, then I get rid of those, then it is, it now, now, and if you, if you are on uh, gabnet.net, if you go over to the left-hand side, we have an on-demand thing, and the on-demand thing uh, simply states uh, that the program is, uh, uh, you know, that there are programs that are available on demand. Now, if you go to any of the top four programs there right now, you'll get nothing, okay? Like, just for the hell of it, if you're, if you're playing this game along with us, click on the exchange and see what comes up. See? Nothing comes up. What comes up is just a white screen saying the, the file is not available. That's because I haven't put the file up yet, but I can do that very easily I go over here to a thing called FileZilla, and I go over to the exchange file there, and I go to the exchange here that we have, uh, okay, and then I double click on it, and very fast, because I have very fast internet, it uh, puts that file 
uh, on there. Now if you were to click on there, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to just do this for the hell of it so that we, we can make sure that it worked. I'll go over here to, uh, uh, where is it? Where's Gab? What happened? Oh, there's GabNet. Okay. And then I hit the exchange and there we go. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. See? Okay. So I, we, we've, now it's up. And that I did that. Now you saw how, how long that took me to do. Maybe two minutes? Okay. Now take that and quadruple it. So that's about eight to ten minutes that I have to spend every night just doing that process. Before that, I have a process which is posting the programs in which I have to make what's called an XML file for each of the programs that are on, of four of them. And they each take me about oh, I don't know, four minutes a piece to do, taking a total of about, oh, 15, 16 minutes. So you add that to the eight. And now you say, okay, Alex, it's only like eight and then uh, uh, f f uh, 16, it's 24 minutes, okay, that you, you, you're in this process. And you go, okay, that's fine. I have been doing that every day for the last five years for at least four programs. Okay, so uh, uh, yes, uh, think about how many hours I have spent of my life just simply doing the busy work. And I wish we were making tons of money here and I could go out and hire a, uh, um, uh, uh, a person to do that work for me. I don't want to get an intern because I don't like people working for slave labor. Um, but, you know, the, somebody's got to put the thing up and... Uh, if I could just get somebody in here to do it. Now, I, Damien has said, I'll do it for my program. I'll make that XML file and I'll post the whole thing. But it's, it's like he doesn't, I have to have access to the same thing. It's just, it's easier if I do it. I would love it if other people would do it. If I could have each of my people post their own shows, uh, I would be delighted with that. If I didn't have that to do, I think my life would be better. But every day around uh, around five o'clock, I say I gotta go post the shows, and I'm off here for you know twenty minutes posting the shows, and then you know in my adulated state of uh, taking uh, uh, drugs like gabapentin and so on, I get a little woozy, and so then I make mistakes, and I make more mistakes today than I used to make. So and then fixing the mistakes. All right. Um, so anyway, that, that's that's what we do here. That, that's the exciting part of doing a podcast. Mm. Please, <clears throat> somebody get me about a hundred thousand listeners every night so that I can sell advertising and hire somebody to do that shit. All right. All right. Anyway. 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 Hello and good evening to all of you. Now you have, an, you have a backstage pass to how this show is done. Now, you know, if I could just come in here and just talk to you, man, that, that's, that's the great thrill I have. That would be really easy. But I've got this bullshit of I'm going to move the, the thing here and i got to take the thing there and i got to put the thing there. And, and, and it's the repetition, I think, that gets me crazy. I, you know, I've always had a great deal of um, sadness for uh, people who do repetitive work. You know, and there are a lot of people out there who do repetitive work. Uh, repetitive work is, uh, is a major um, factor in today's uh, society. People who are at a, uh, a car plant, and his job is to put in the... Um, uh, the side view mirror, okay? And then the next guy's job is to put on a bumper, and they do this over and over and over and over again. And they, they get paid fairly good money for it, but, you know, after a while, you got to go crazy with the repetition. And, and you go over to China, you go to some of those places that, like Foxconn where they make your, uh, your iPhone and so on. Just imagine for a moment uh, the... the, the um, uh, just, just imagine for a moment the the uh, how many people go crazy doing that kind of work. So much so that Foxconn used to have people living on premises, and they had dormitories, 
And below the dormitories, they had netting. And the reason they had netting is because after, you know, putting in that one part on that iPhone day in, day out, day in, day out, this repetitive work, people were jumping out of the windows and killing themselves. So I have repetitious work I have to do here, and it drives me nuts. I did not get in this, into this business to do repetitious work. I got into this bit. Why did I get into radio? So I wouldn't have to work, okay? So I wouldn't have to do some job that uh, takes, uh, takes literally something out of you, you know, just sucks the soul out of you. And, and people who work at places like, you know, when you, I, I was looking for my iPhone, which isn't here. It's in the other room. Great. Tonight will be the night that Jack Bishop has a problem with his program, and he calls me, and the phone rings over there. Anyway, uh, but, but I sometimes feel guilty about owning an iPhone. Because of the of the people that make it, I mean, I know I give them work, but man, the repetitious work they're doing is driving them fuck. So they jump out of windows at Foxconn. Anyway, that's that's that. Okay, I wanted to talk to you about something tonight, and I, you know, I figured, eh, I'll, okay, I'll bullshit for about a half hour here for about twenty five minutes before you know the show, and um, the thing that has gotten to me is that I think we, we have lost our soul as a country. You know, I don't know that we were ever that great. I mean, there were other countries that had, uh, I think, a better national sense of decency uh, than we do. I mean, you take any of the Scandinavian countries, they're very decent people up there. Um, and they have a basic problem come along and they, they figure out how to solve it you know, in some kind of humane way. Well, in this country, we have things that we obsess ourselves with and that we make, we, we, we treat it like it's the most important basic freedom that we have. And one of those freedoms is the freedom to have a gun. Uh, I don't know, you know, the, I don't think in their, in their wildest imaginations, the framers of our Constitution, when they wrote the Second Amendment, really meant it that way. It was meant to solve a problem at the moment. You know, they just come out of a, um, out of a, out of a revolutionary war where um, you had a musket at home uh, so that when Paul Revere ran through the town yelling, the British are coming, the British are coming, you'd grab your musket and you'd go out and start shooting. And so the right of the individual, in order to maintain a well-ordered militia, that's a prerequisite to this thing, the, the um, right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. But that was, that was then. Today, if they looked at that and saw the way in which it had been perverted and used all wrong, and when they see uh, grade schools being shot up by some crazed lunatic who has access to these, these uh uh, weapons of destruction. Uh, I think they would say, uh, 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 let's let's forget about number two, or let's reword it, or let's make it more specific. You know, like in case the British ever invade again, the right of you know whatever. So, uh, the spirit of the Constitution is not, you know, the way it was written. It was written at a time where that was that was needed, but it isn't needed now. What, I'm losing lots of people as I'm talking? Fuck you. Anyway, uh, I, I look over here and there's this little graph that shows me how many people are listening and watching and not watching. And and uh, it, it, it just went bleep the minute I started talking about guns. Well, fuck you, okay? Go away. I don't want you. I want all the other people stuck around. Um, so in New Zealand a week ago, one week ago, uh, I'm, I'm emphasize one week ago, uh, New Zealand uh, was hit by an attack at a Muslim mosque, and then another second Muslim mosque as well. Uh, total uh, damage, I think, was a total 50 people dead? I, I believe it was a total of 50. Uh, I think it was 49, and then uh, the 50th person died uh, just uh, a while back. Uh, but anyway one week 
already New Zealand says they are going to make it illegal, make it impossible for you to have military-grade weapons, okay, and also assault rifles, okay? They just gonna, they, they said, we're just going to do it, you know? It's, it, we're off and running on this thing. It took them one week. It took them one week. What, you know, I mean, they're going to have to go to their, their uh, uh, Congress and so on, but it's going to pass. It's going to pass really easily. Okay, because these people don't want this shit going on in New Zealand. They're very happy with the life they've had there. You know, they had this killing of these people in New Zealand was more people than get killed in a single year in all of New Zealand. Now, we can't say that because it was less than the total amount of people that get killed every year in New York City by weapons. But Nevertheless, knowing that their nature is not that and that probably maybe they don't even have to do away with assault weapons and, and military-grade, uh, 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 you know, uh, ammunition, you know, the big guns, the, the ones that rapid fire. I don't know what you call them. Forget it. I'm not a big gun guy. Uh, they so they got it together fast enough because they said, hey, you know, if this is going to be a possibility, then we're going to make it an impossibility. And I think that that show, says wonderful things about the people of New Zealand. They take great pride in being multi-national, uh, 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 that there are a lot of people there from different countries and different cultures, and they take great pride in that. And uh, they don't want that happening a lot or anymore. Now, they're not banning, banning uh, handguns. Um, and I, I don't know why. I don't know what the thinking is behind that. But at least they did something fast about it, you know? Uh, and hopefully, they say within a couple of weeks, they expect that the whole country will not be allowed to have these, these, these weapons of mass destruction. Uh, as a sidebar note, right after the incident in New Zealand, thousands of people showed up at their local police departments with their guns and turned them in. Now, can you imagine that happening? I mean, we had a thing like what went on up in uh, up in uh, at that school uh, uh, a few years ago with the kids, you know, and. Any number of incidents, the one that took place in Florida, you know, did anybody suddenly run into their police department and say, here, here's my gun? No. Everybody was saying, don't take my gun away. No, you're going to use this as an excuse to take my gun away. Damn right. You kill, kids get killed with these things. People get killed with these things. Let me tell you another story. I've told the story before, but I'm going to tell it again. I hate guns. I absolutely detest them. Uh, I detest them because they are uh, 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 have, they have no other use. They have no other reason for existence, or as we call it, or the French call it, raison d'être. Oh, see how smart I am. Uh, they have uh, uh, no other use but to kill something. Now, sometimes it's used to kill an animal. You take it home and you eat it. Okay, but it it's only if you can tell me that it has another purpose besides killing something, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give you any argument back you want. But no, the, you can't tell me that it, it isn't used for that, okay? Because what do you do? What, what, what the gun? Oh, you take, take the butt of the gun and you can hammer it like it's a, like it's a, a nail with it, like it's a hammer. Yeah, but that's not what it was made for. You can use a hammer for that. Uh, yeah, I guess you could kill somebody with a hammer, but, it, you know, you have to be a lot closer. You don't, can't be across the street, right? Um, the same thing with, with every a lot of other weapons, things that are dangerous, knives and so on. Somebody has to come up close to somebody else in order to use them. With a gun, you can be across the street, all right? Um but guns are, their only purpose is to, they were created to kill something. Basically, 
they were created for hunters. They were an automatic thing for hunters. But then we went off to war, and what did we use them for? To kill other people. I mean, what, oh, yeah, I use it for target practice. Well, I'm sorry. The gun wasn't created for target practice. Target practice is only a form of practice so that you'll be really good at using that gun to kill somebody. Ta-da! Does any of this make sense to you? Am I making uh, sense? Anyway, so when I was, um, how old was I? Maybe 17. I had a friend, and uh, he, had, he had problems. He was one of these kids who, you know, uh, just kept getting, in, uh, getting into trouble, and he was just a wild child at the time. I, I've known him since, and he's been become a friend of mine since, and he's turned into a fine, decent human being. But at the time, he was a little, uh, a little on the nutty side. And uh, I went over to his house one day. And he, uh, as we're talking, he says, look what I got. And he pulls out a gun. And I, I went, oh, oh, that's nice. You got, you got yourself a gun. He says, yeah. And it's loaded, too. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. He said, uh, and he pointed the gun at me. And... Um, he said, uh, don't leave. Stay right where you are, or I'll shoot you. <laughs> and I, I sat there. I didn't know what to do. And then he took the gun, and instead of just pointing it at me, put it at my head. Okay? I was in this condition and in this situation for about 25 minutes. If it wasn't 25 minutes, it was the longest time I'd ever spent in one place trying to figure out how to get myself out of this thing. And I got, um, I, I just, it, after a while, I just said to myself, well, if this is the day I'm going to die, then this is the day I'm going to die. But I'm, I'm just not going to put up with this. And I said, I'm leaving. Do whatever you want to do. And I turned around and I started walking. And every step I took, I was anticipating a gun going off. For 25 minutes, I sat there with a gun pointed in my face. The gun cocked, filled with a bullet. Um, it, uh, it forever set me on a path to hating guns. I mean, I can't even I can't even pick one up. If you came in here and said, Alex, here's a gun, pick it up. I couldn't touch it. Okay. That's how terrified I am of them. And and I should be terrified. Don't I have a reason to be terrified? Let's be honest. I have every reason to be terrified of a gun. One was pointing at me with a bullet in it. And if this kid, who by the way was drunk when he did this, had suddenly forgotten to you know uh, you know kind of just was getting drowsy or something and let go of the uh, of the of the trigger I would have been a dead man I just turned around I walked out and that was it and I just said why why do those things even exist and I had just been terrorized by a gun now I don't know how many of you have ever been terrorized by a gun before in your life, but I venture to say most of you haven't. And for those of you who say you have a gun around the house to protect your home, you don't even know about what guns are about and, and what having one in the house is all about. If you've got a gun, get rid of it. Don't have it around. Why? Because you, you actually put a piece of armament uh, available to anybody who might want to do you no good. Let's say somebody, you know, a guy wants to break into your house, uh, is ready and willing to fight you to rather than have you call the police or get him arrested or whatever. And if you're now pointing a gun at him, he, you have now added a component. He may not, might not have a gun. You've added a component to the situation which wasn't there before. And he didn't enter with a gun, but now he knows where there is one. You're holding it. And if he jumps you, he's going to grab the gun and he could turn around and shoot you. So more people get killed by their own guns than just about any other device.
So don't think that you're protecting your family. You're not protecting your family. How many kids every year get killed because their parents don't take put those guns responsibly in a safe and the kid finds it and boom, either blows his sister away or blows himself away. So all I'm saying to you is this obsession we have with guns has got to stop. Uh, not very many countries have this uh, same obsession, okay? And we got to do something about it. We really do. Well, I'm looking over here. Do you know I lost people talking about that? It almost makes me want to sign off now and just say, fuck you, you know. But what I'm saying is important. And it's it, you got to start thinking a little more rationally about how we use these implements of destruction. And, and this, this insanity that goes on with the fight to keep guns legal, you know. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely amazing to me that this even goes on. So, that's it. That's my preachment for tonight. And um, um, I'm exhausted now. Uh, and I really should just, uh, you know, I, I really, I look here and, and we were, we got up to a certain amount of people and then all of a sudden it went down. Oh, now that I've stopped talking about it, it's going back up. Ah, oh, fuck all of you. Yeah. You know, go ahead, blow your brains out with your little guns. Have fun. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, I, if you, if anybody's noticed out there, I've opened up the Skype line so that we can talk. And so far, Skype seems to be working. Every day I come in here and I'm, I'm waiting for the day that it won't work. But it does because some geniuses out there learned how to make a version of it that Skype can't shut down. <laughs> or at least for the time being, it can't shut down. Uh, and so we made that available for you to use. So the lines are open, and I'm just waiting for somebody to call. Um, you know, I just went on a, on a, on a rant for the last uh, 25 minutes, which I don't like to do because I'd rather just play an interview or something that I did and just go out and have a half hour that I don't have to do anything. Well, what what do you know? Here comes Char here comes Charlie Wallace. Let me see here, and Phil Meyer is calling, and uh, let me see here. Um, well, Char Char there, Charlie's going to kick in soon. Uh, Phil has uh, kicked in. in. Hey, yeah, doing? there you go. You always take a little bit longer, Charlie. That you whirl around for a while before anything well, happens, huh? Yeah. He's looking for his gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phil. Very funny. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, I'm sure you were pissed at what I was saying. I know. You know, I don't get pissed because people have an opinion. Uh, you know, you have had your experiences. You have your uh, opinion as well as the, you know, you feel this is the way it is. And I think it's genuine. Uh, I don't agree with it, but. You well, know, what is this? What is it, what, what is this gun insanity we have in this country? Why? Why? Um, What's so important yeah. about a fucking gun? Well, uh, uh, well, uh, the Second Amendment. No, no sec Amendment. fuck the Second Amendment. They didn't write okay, it for that Chief reason. Justice they didn't. Bennett. They didn't write it for that reason. And by the way, by the way, the Supreme Court did dictate back in 1936. Yeah. That that uh, that uh, particular amendment applied to a uh, to a group right rather than an individual right. Well, I'm all for the group having the the guns, but you know, uh, the Second Amendment was there put there to prevent. No, it wasn't. Government. It wasn't. It, no, it, was it wasn't. No, it okay. wasn't, Phil. So it, we just we Bennett we just came no. we we just came out of a revolutionary war where people had to get to arms fast in order to in order to win that war. And so they put that in there in case the the British ever came back and tried to do it again. That's your it, it, and I'll tell you right now that the framers of the Constitution, if they were here today, would say, "Whoa, wait a minute! This is not what we meant. This is not I the reason. This is not the. Right. Re You've got to think about why it was written when it was written." I saw your signature right next to Button Gwinnett's signature on the Constitution. And uh, I, I'm sure you were there. You knew. Was his name Button? Button Gwinnett. He yeah. was uh, the least known person to sign the Constitution. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. 
I'm sure he would be here to tell you that that isn't exactly what they meant. They, that was <laughs> that was there because you got to realize, you know, people talk about the Constitution as being a living document, and actually, it shouldn't be. Uh, it should be a a, 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 a a thing that is constantly evolving and that it is constantly changing because of the times. And that what was written back at the very beginning of our of our country was it was a very important statement to make in the Constitution. There's Chief Justice Wheeler. There's Chief Justice Wheeler. <laughs> Would you agree with me, uh, uh, Josh, that that when they wrote the Constitution, they wrote it with a certain thing in mind, and it wasn't like that everybody had to have guns and shoot up schools. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would agree that the current situation um, mm. or status, I don't know, whatever you want to say, uh, is not probably uh, concurrent with what they had in mind. I, I mean, I, I agree with you. Um, I don't take, like, the extreme left position, okay, but... I agree with you that they would be pretty shocked to see people owning, um, you know, personal arsenals. I mean, there are individuals in this country that are uh, far more well armed than um, entire units, <laughs> you know, were yeah. at, at that time. I mean, you know, and, and for no reason, really. How many I mean, guns you know, do you other own? Other than, you know, paranoia, maybe. How many guns Mental do you own, Phil? It's eight. Well, there's your arsenal. Uh... Oh, that's not a very big arsenal. I I, I had friends with over a hundred. Oh jeez. Uh, yeah. No, they collected them. Oh, and they oh, displayed oh, yeah. them. oh, they, and you know they're so beautiful too. They just so that cold <laughs> well, hard so, that cold so hard really steel is so just you know. <laughs> God, if I were if I had one right here, I'd like to jerk myself off with a gun. It would really be fun. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> just kind of rub it in the yes. right way. <laughs> I mean, come on, a hundred, over a hundred guns is the guy, he's out of his fucking mind. That's the guy of... also owned a troop carrier and a fire truck, an well, antique fire truck. Well, the point is, uh, well, an antique fire truck sounds fun. Yeah. You know, what kid didn't want to have his own fire truck? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, he, he had one. Yeah. He had more money he knew what to do with. Yeah. But uh, he had quite a collection of guns and, you know, he was a good shot and uh, he's dead now. Yeah, I, when I was a kid, uh, I went to a show uh, for Hopalong Cassidy at the Veterans Memorial Auditorium. And William Boyd was there who played Hopalong Cassidy. And one of yeah. the things they gave away as a prize was a gun and holster set with two guns and two, two, two holsters, whatever. Yeah. And uh, they called out the number and I won. And I couldn't have been happier to have myself guns, you know, these, yeah. these play guns. But, I, knew, you know, you were a kid and you knew they were play guns. You knew they weren't real guns. It was a different time. They didn't have the stigma that they do because of the elitists that want to take it away. Well, so they I would take away uh, your well, rights. I, you know, I don't think it's a good thing to teach your kid to to uh, use guns. And there are other things you he can play with. And most kids play. No, I don't. Do you, anybody know any kids who play with guns anymore? Yeah, but what if you taught them how to respect them rather than uh, why use res them? Why respect them? Just teach them. Don't have one. Well, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. No, but you're no. Unfortunately, it yeah. It's unfortunately it doesn't work that way, and it's time we start changing our mindset in this country. You know, when I was a kid, they didn't give kids Adderall to keep them in in line, and this Adderall causes psychosis, which makes them hallucinate. Phil, and Phil, did you hear what you hear? What, you hear what you just did? Yeah, you changed the subject. Really. No, I'm I'm no. telling you why. No, you, you changed you it. You Sandy changed Hook, it to Adderall, and every guy that ever went into a school and started shooting it up was on Adderall, weren't they? Every one of them. Most likely. No. Or some other no. Most likely. No. Fi go online and find me the cases where they had been prescribed Adderall. Uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, you can't there, come. There, I bet you. Cases. I bet you can't come up with one yeah, offhand. Yeah, I can. Uh, and uh, let's oh, see. Oh, okay. here, here we go. Ahead. We, this know, is the way we keep him busy, and then the adults can talk. I think you just have, you know, that uh, New Zealand's having an overreaction to a situation. And uh, how is that know, an overreaction? What does anybody need a military they, grade? What they ought to do is go after these white supremacists. What, 
what, for, what? Uh, for uh, you know, and and watch them. Make sure that they're not dangerous. Just make like sure well, there's a good way there. to make sure they're not dangerous is to make armament. sure they can't get these military grade armaments. Well, the guy bought it legally. Well, he ain't you know? wouldn't be able to do it starting in a couple of weeks. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see. You know, uh, whenever Phil stalls, he's a, looking for some kind of lame answer he doesn't have. Well, you got all of these people uh, in New Zealand that want to get money for the guns that the government is going to seize anyway. So this is their one opportunity to to recoup uh, the cost of the gun. But the, uh, a tyrannical government goes in. The first thing they do is they take away the guns. Then they take away the books. Then they take away the rest of your li- uh, uh, rights. You know, the Nazis did it. Uh, yes and I no. I haven't heard about them taking away anybody's guns. They're just making it illegal to sell them anymore. No, they, uh, they, they. I believe that what I heard tonight was that they're going to take them. Uh, they want you to turn them in. They're going to make Phil, them Phil, possessed. Phil. People in p- p- people people in Germany and the adjacent countries to Hitler had guns, and yeah, they and, and they in fact and they no, they in fact used them. And they were in yeah, the underground. Jews. They were more. They were more guns. There were a lot of guns fighting the Germans. It wasn't like all of a sudden the Germans came along, took everybody's guns, and now they could take over. No, yeah, well, that, well, it's just they had this huge army that was yeah. very well supplied with armaments of war. Yeah, and you didn't you know, see all the book burnings and all the well, that had. What the, the book burnings have to do with taking guns away? Because first they take the guns, no, see, then they no, take you, the you're completely, You're completely throwing this thing in all kinds of different directions to deflect from the main question, which is, why do you have to own a fucking gun? Because I'm a Jew supremacist. <laughs> Not a white supremacist. Well, go join your 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 friend uh, uh, Netanyahu. Maya Kahani? Netanyahu. 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 Oh. Uh, you know, I, I was at Brooklyn College. I was auditing a course and, uh, in 1969, uh, and this guy approached me in the, in the class, and he says, you want to join the JDL? So uh, I did under my stage name. What was your stage name? Lee Phillips. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you know. And my radio name. What, Meyer was too Jewish and you wanted to join the Jewish <laughs> Defense League no, under a fake name. name so nobody would know you were a Jew? Database. Well, actually, there was no databases in 1969, but I didn't want it on a list. Oh, boy. You know. um, uh, I, I remember the time I met Maya Kahani. He was waiting in the uh, lobby of, the, uh, of WMCA. And uh, the woman said, this guy wants to see you. And I said, okay. And he said, my name, I'm Meyer McConney, and I'm the head of the Jewish Defense League. And I immediately knew who the hell that was. And he said, I want to be on your show. And I said, not in fucking chance. And I turned around and walked away. When did they kill him? I don't know. Not soon enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they were kind of like, uh, who, who's that guy that you used to let on your show uh, who wore the little beret and uh, uh, used to march around neighborhoods? Um, I, I never had him on. You didn't have him? What, what was his name? I mean, the, even uh, the people that were part uh, of the... Curtis Sliwa? Uh, Curtis Sliwa? Yeah, that's it, Sliwa. No, he, no uh, oddly enough, I, I was interviewed a few years ago by Sliwa, and, and he... Uh, he was just so happy to talk to me because he says, I was a, I'm was a big fan of yours. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. to myself, yeah, but I've hated you all these years. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I never had him on the show. No. Mm-mm. No? No. I never, I never brought people on the show that I wouldn't want to talk to in normal situations, you know? Yeah. Uh, why should I bring a Curtis Lee on and then sit there and berate him for an hour? You know, I, I just, I didn't see that as uh, anything that functionally was important to do except to make me look good. Yeah. You know. But it didn't serve any purpose. Yeah, as far yeah. as as far as guns go, uh, you know, I think if somebody's responsible... <laughs> And a law-abiding citizen, mm. and has the training, mm-hmm. and and owns a safe. I don't oh, think anyone oh, should own a gun without a safe. 
And, uh, you know, that's uh, mm -hmm. a lot of these incidents are caused through. Yeah. What about what about what about security? the kid who doesn't go to a class, but he manages to get lay his hands on a gun and then he decides to go shoot up the neighborhood? What about that kid? We're not we're not worried oh, about the people who is, go to the gun another, classes. What about? No. Is that a what about? No, no I'm asking <laughs> you what about. Yeah, I know you're asking. What okay, about. how about? All right, that's better. Uh, you know, I think that buying guns, uh, you shouldn't be able just to buy a gun like you can buy a car. You, you, have, to, you have to take a test uh, when you buy a car uh, and you drive it. Uh, it. You have to have insurance. Uh, you, you, there's, there's a number of things you have to do. Now, I know that owning a car is not a right like it is to own a gun. Funny you should mention that. I have to, it, it turns out I have to get my uh, driver's license this year renewed. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I have to go down to the, uh, uh, the DMV here uh, because, it, be, no, because <clears throat> they get, in order to get a driver's license that has, if you do it online, it doesn't have a thing that allows you to use it uh, to get on an airplane. Right. There's a, yeah. a, federal, a federal something. you got to have yeah. a little seal. So I have, fact, so I have to go down there yeah. uh, in order to do that. I have uh, to get one of those, too. Yeah. What happens if I don't pass the eye test? They just say you have to wear glasses? Yeah. They, they, don't, they don't not give you the... No. They just put a provision on it that needs corrective lenses. Corrective yeah. lenses is required. Okay. So. That, my li license says that. But you know, to no, buy but, a but, gun but, in but, California but, but, now. But they won't. Uh, if I say I don't have corrective lenses right now, they won't say, well, we won't give you the license until you get them. No, you, you could try the test. Maybe you'll pass. No, I probably maybe probably will. But what I'm saying is if I, if I fail the test, they then put on there, need, you need corrective lenses, right? They don't. No. You're going to have to wear the corrective lenses, take the test, and show that you can read the chart with the corrective lenses. Oh, son of yeah. a bitch. So if you have a pair, bring them with you. Keep them in your pocket. Yeah. Well, I'm, no, I mean, I don't know. I'm going, to go see, I'm going to go see my eye doctor anyway and have him checked Yeah. and see if I'm okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but uh, I don't have to do that till December. Uh, yeah. then I have well, to down. In California, yeah. if you want to buy a gun, you need to have one of those new licenses. Otherwise, they won't sell it to you. Uh, for one reason or other, I don't know what the the significance is completely of that new license, but it has it's something because, to do because with a federal check. They, they have you go through, uh, through you have to bring down a, a passport, a, a driver's license, you have to bring prove that you live where you live and it's it's the kind of thing you would do if they were going to you know let you on airplanes let you go through mm -hmm. the easy pass you know stuff yeah. like that yeah well yeah. uh because you know I go shooting most Sundays uh yeah. in the morning and uh uh I watch them people want to buy a gun they sell guns at this place that I shoot at yeah and uh you know there's a big sign that says you need that particular kind of license uh, in order to purchase a gun. Yeah. Well, anyway, so I got, I'll get down to the DMV and do it. What the hell? It's no big deal. You know. Yeah. But if I do a, I, if I do it by mail, what happens is I have to, um, um, if I do it by mail, uh, I, I can't get that certificate or whatever it is on the license. Yeah. And by the way, you know, they charge, you, they charge you almost that. 60 bucks for a license now. In New York, maybe. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is yeah. in California. What what do they what do they charge where you are, Charlie? I think it's twenty four. Really? Six years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th this is like uh, I don't know five years or something, and then next yeah. year my passport has to be renewed. So you know that's yeah, expensive now. Uh, my passport renewal because uh, I had to renew it to go to the Bahamas mm -hmm. uh, was uh, one hundred and thirty five bucks. Plus, I had to pay more for some other form or some other mailing that they had to do. And uh, and they take your old one. They send it back eventually. But Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think 10 years ago when I got my passport last time, it was, uh, it was 35 bucks or something like that. I was 115. Yeah? Wow. 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
2009. Yeah, well, uh, so I got to get a passport. To, well, what do I have to do with my days anyway? You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, so, um, but I, you know, all I'm saying is that I, I, I just found it so civilized of, uh, of New Zealand to do what they did and to do it as fast as, they, as they're doing it. They haven't done it yet. It'll take a couple more weeks to get all the, all the, all the things passed through their assemblies and so on, or whatever their form of government is there. Uh, uh, they're probably communists and socialists, uh, Phil. Absolutely. Um, and uh, it, it's really, um, uh, it, it, it shows you what a civilized country does. We are not a civilized country anymore. <laughs> You know, 36 school shooters related violence committed by those under influence of psychiatric drugs. So, uh, wait, 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 wait. yeah, but what article? Um, uh, CCHR <laughs> International, the mental health watchdog. Well, do you, uh, do you know what the, who they are and what they do and what their position on things are? No, but they wrote an article that agrees with my opinion. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> that's that's, good that's the me. fucking trouble with the internet is that you can go online and find somewhere, someplace, proof of your misguided uh, uh, opinions. I'm I'm serious. And, I mean, and yours. No, I don't <laughs> go on the internet to get my information. In fact, most of my information is pure logic. Oh. And, and it, not having guns, I think, is a purely logical stance. Yeah. Well, Hitler felt the same way. I oh, gee, what's with Hitler? Well, what, what, what's with your stance, you know? Same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. Uh, Are you likening me to Hitler? Uh, when it comes to guns. Oh, boy. What books do you want me to burn? Huh? You know, you were the you were the voice of youth. You you were you were the guy that stood up to the man. And I, now anything the man recommends, you're woman, right there uh, the saying, man, give me more. The man recommends yeah, I'm still they, you know, the totalitarian it, power. The, the man Democrat is want. Donald Trump. No, 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 no. The man is government. And, yeah, and uh, what is Donald Trump? He's the head of the fucking government. No, he came in to stir those guys up. Oh yeah, he came in yeah, to, yeah. to shake them up, and he you know, came into office to avoid uh, to avoid arrest. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I, don't I think, think he so. Thought he was going to win, you know. Uh, well, he, and, 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 but once and he now did, now he knows he better stay in until the day he dies. Otherwise, he's going to be up to his ass in indictments. Does that mean he gets a third term? No, that means he'll probably be. I think he'll be dead before then. Look at how little fatty, fatty yeah, two by four. Yeah, what was this deal? I heard that he threw his golf club in the bag and it came and jumped back up and hit him. Gee, even his golf club doesn't like him. Yeah, he he was pissed off. Uh, I don't know. I, I read that today, uh, or I read the headline. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah, well, maybe he should stop paying, playing golf and being president a little more. Do you really think? Uh, are he, you sure about that? Do you think he works hard? Well, you, you know, you may get what you wish for. You know, if he's playing golf. Well, no. If he worked more, maybe he would read the stuff that's put in front of him and understand how this government is run. Mm -hmm. He has a mis he has a misguided idea of how the government is run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he he he's like a like a like a kid. I'm president. Why can't I do that? Right. Well, can't the president have to negotiate can't the president do anything he wants to do? Why should he negotiate with terrorists? Well, why he negotiates with Schumer, Kim Jong Un? Yeah, he, he, Kim Jong Un. And what? What more of a of a of a of a terrorizing human being is that? I mean, the way he treats his people and the starvation and the the uh, the uh, the prison camps and things like it's that. Not He's starvation. Terrible. It's the Atkins diet. Yeah. 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 Sure. By the way, you know, I, 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 what I get a little tired of, uh, is anybody else going to call the show tonight or is it just going to be the three of us, four of us, four. actually? Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the, the, uh, the thing that, um, uh, uh, now what was I going to say? Uh. The thing that bothers you. Yeah, the thing that bothers me 
Oh, yeah, is that they always keep changing the, uh, the rules on things. Yeah. Uh, you know, I went on the Atkins, uh, what you call the Atkins diet. I call it a low-carb diet, okay? Yeah. Uh, and I lost 60 pounds. 55, I've gained a few pounds back. But, I mean, 55, 60, right in that area. Now, that was very good for my health, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll all agree with that. Now, part of that was having two eggs every morning and some bacon because they yeah. have no carbs. <clears throat> I am now told that if you have more than four eggs a week, it could give you heart problems. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> that's from the non, that's the egg haters. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, this that. is the AMA came out with this. So now I, I have this question to ask any doctor who would tell me you're eating too many eggs. I'm going to say, that's why I lost 60 pounds. Now, would it be better if I just put those 60 pounds back on? And, well, they don't uh, want you to do that either. But they'd no, rather but they, give you drugs it, than allow you to have eggs because eggs mean you didn't need the drugs. You know What? Uh, what well, drug? It, it, the AMA is nothing more than a dispensary for drugs. No, yeah. no. Yeah, they're, they're the arm of uh, Big Pharma. No, no, they aren't. Yeah. Oh, take this pill. No, they're not. Oh, you got a reaction to that? You got Take them. This one on you top got, of that you got one. them all wrong. Oh, yeah. they're nice guys. It, it, no, but it's big pharma that are the assholes. The doctors sit there while these hot saleswomen come in and say, "Hey, you want to see this newest drug we've got? Look at my tits." Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I sat in my doctor's office one day, and these saleswomen would come in, yeah. and I would go. I went into the wrong business, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, you used to have, uh, you know, it wasn't saleswomen; it was groupies. Well, you know, believe me, uh, these saleswomen were just, you know, they're hot. Stunning. Yeah. They're hot. No, uh, and, and, and they would come in and, you know, they would convince Dr. So-and-so that he should, uh, you know, prescribe their particular drug. And uh, they would he would listen because he wanted to look down her blouse, you know, but... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's about the extent of doctors. Uh, uh, you, you, you're, you're bullshitting yourself if you think that they're not complicit. You know. Uh, well, there are doctors. You can go online. There is a site where you can find out exactly how much money your doctor was paid by pharmaceutical companies, not to prescribe drugs, but to do services for the drug companies. Such as give speeches, including junkets, speeches. No, I think yeah. I don't think junkets were on there, but speeches and things like that. And there are some doctors making a, who made like a million dollars a year off the pharmaceutical companies. Wow. Yeah. But well, you know, uh, there there are a number. Of, I have a friend in the dental uh, sales business, mm -hmm. and they get dentists to put on seminars that believe that. The dent, other dentists pay for it, but it's continuing education, and uh, you know they they get it. They get the dentists that are familiar. Well, all with I'm saying is what you're, what you're or, saying is everybody's complicit with everybody else. I think the main complic, uh, compl, uh, compl, complicity is mm -hmm. with the drug companies themselves and what they've been doing to uh, evade government regulation. I mean, the whole problem with uh, with the OxyContin and so on has to do with the fact that the government wasn't watching them closely enough and they were getting away with shit, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and it wasn't the doctors who were doing that. Although no, it was, it of course was a, not. They're not the ones well, that prescribe the shit to the Well, here, here's the problem. And I, I heard about this from one doctor that I was talking to. People mm -hmm. come into him and they go, they go uh, I'm really nervous. I need, and then they would name the drug. And the doctor said, I now have a choice. Do I give him the drug he wants yeah. or do I deny him the drug he wants and lose a patient? Well, I, uh, I had a surgery. And so today. It's, it's the advertising on television that has yeah. really changed a lot of this. This yeah. is the only country in the world outside of, I think New Zealand's the other one, believe it or not where advertising for for drugs are allowed no other country allows them <laughs> phil no yeah. other country that's because they are on adderall and they go have a psychotic episode and shoot uh, the place uh, up but I see. uh the uh the, the 
the, the thing about the drugs is uh, I, I had a surgery today. Uh, I, I came back from diving and I felt this thing on my back and it turns out it was a cyst and it was right between my shoulder blades on my uh, spine. And so when I'd sit back, it hurt and it was infected. So they lanced it. And so, uh, well, that's major surgery. Well, yeah, it was. Uh, well, when you said I had so surgery I said, today, I figured maybe they, you know, give you a prefrontal lobotomy or something well, like I, that. I, I, I was actually joking about that. But uh, so I, I said to her, I said, uh, how about Valium? And she says, no, nah, you're not going to, you know, no, no Valium. <laughs> I, I said, well, I, I don't like Vicodin. Valium is, you know, I like Valium. But uh, no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't give it up. Oh, well, I, but see, that, that's the problem. I, I don't understand all the lawsuits and everything against, you know, like the the drug makers of the pain medication, because like you guys were talking earlier about the, the advertisements. I, I don't know. Maybe I've missed it, but I've never seen a magazine advertisement or a television commercial for those kinds of drugs. It's always for, you know, uh, the depression ones and the and the. Uh, oh, I uh, see. I see sexual a, things, I, I you know, but I've never seen a commercial oh. that says, you know, I'll come get you some fucking Percocets, you know, and, and those are the drugs. The, the, that those are, yeah, yeah, those. Well, I think we should those, give them fuckers out for free. But. The, those <laughs> drugs, they don't advertise. I, I, you're quite right. I can't remember seeing an ad for like, you know, right. Xanax or whatever. But, but those are the people that are getting sued for, you know, similar to the tobacco makers, basically for, uh, you know, and I well, keep reading these well, articles about, you know marketing their drugs in certain ways to and and upping the dosages and everything to which i, I can't mean, remember which company I've seen, which I, mean, co I can't remember which company makes uh oxycontin it might be bayer right. or it might be eli Lilly. i can't remember who Bayer just I got sued for private, well what, private they, what, what they were what they were what they were what they're saying about about uh oxycontin for the longest time they mislabeled it you know yeah. so that they would sell it was more. called cotton balls no, no, I mean, they mislabeled on the label. You have to say all the contradictions and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And they were they were lying about a lot of it. They were hedging yeah. it. And that's not a lot. 60 Minutes about a month ago. What? That. How many? <clears throat> about a month ago on 60 Minutes. They yeah. Had a, a, yeah. About that. It's amazing they, what's in, in, in the stuff they sell us. You know, I was on that scuba trip, and you know, a couple of guys, were, they were very intelligent guys. And we were talking about deodorant. And they said, oh, well, you don't want to use a deodorant that has this uh, glycol stuff in it. And so I looked this morning, and mine does. You know, you know what that is? It, it's antifreeze. Yeah. And, and it gives you no, cancer. No, it's not antifreeze. It's used in antifreeze. Yeah. But because it keeps things cancer. from freezing. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. Well, you I, like the armpits to freeze. Yeah, and you don't no, want to get arm. Not. What are you going to get? Especially armpit cancer from it? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the this uh, uh, something glycol is uh, it, it's it's cancer causing. Oh, it is. Yeah. How often do you use a deodorant? Every morning. I I I never use a deodorant. Yeah. I I do something which may sound unusual. I, I, you may, know, may, it may sound unusual, Phil. It may sound unusual, but uh, I found that if you take a shower, you don't <laughs> need the deodorant. Well, I use it right after the shower, which I take which I every, morning. every morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's uh, I don't I don't use um, what a cologne, and the deodorant has a pleasant uh, pleasant smell. Really, uh, uh, I just I just don't I don't know. There's just a, a lot of uh, kind of a movement to sort of equate the pain medication drug makers as you know perpetrating the same kind of fraud as the tobacco companies and i i mean i, I don't know i just have never seen the massive campaign for um pain medication that you know that you saw with uh um tobacco. cigarettes and you know we certainly never tried to get 12 year olds hooked on you know pain medication i, I don't know just some of the regulations with the pain medication like you were talking about you can go to the doctor and Oh, well, I feel this, and I'd really love to try this. And like you said, they they'll they'll almost always give it to you. But but Josh, if you go in there and you legitimately are in pain, I yeah. mean legitimately, I need some fucking pain medication. 
Oh, no, you'll be fine. I, just take some fucking ibuprofen, you know, which yeah, you know, barely kills a me. fucking cat. I mean, give me a yeah. fucking break, you know? Uh, you know, well... Well, I'll tell you, I gotta tell you something. I gotta tell you, Marjorie has these uh, these ibuprofen she gets, which she gets by prescription, which are 800s. 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 And uh, I use those all the time. I mean, they are... I, strong ibuprofen really is... will It will... It solve a problem better than some painkillers. But you're not supposed to snort it. I wasn't hey. snorting it, Phil. Uh, okay, then you know, smoking it. But uh, Josh, you is anybody? Is that, that by the way, is anybody out there going to call tonight? I mean, <laughs> last night Phil wasn't here, and we filled up. No, yeah. you, you had nine at one point. I had nine at one point. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, you were checking, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> and, you were you checking know. in to see, uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, you know, but when you're not here, people like to call. Well, it's the same same people except, uh, what's his name in Berkeley, Tom. Yeah. And, and and I don't think he dislikes calling when I'm Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. Because I'm always respectful to him. Yes, but that has nothing to do with it. Your opinions drive him nuts. Well, I guess he's not capable of listening to other people's opinions. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, as long as they're the same of his own, as, as his own. That's correct. Uh, and that's yeah. as it should be. Because his uh, opinions are correct. Uh, you know, hey, I guess you're preaching to the choir, you know. Um, uh, but here comes Charlene Martinez, by knows. the way. Charlene is joining us. Uh, she's uh, out there. Hi, Charlene. How are you? Oh, good. Yeah, you know, my eyeliner's all over my face, but <laughs> um, that's I feel very that's well just today. like that's just like a woman. Oh, my eyeliner! I'll tell you what happened. You want to hear about? We were talking about drugs. So Marjorie comes home. Says, I have the worst pain. She says, I've had this horrible pain. It's like from right here, you know, up around the bottom of my chest, down down to my abdomen, and it's, I've just been in pain all day, and. Uh, she said, do you have anything I could take? You know, and well, I said, you know, there's ibuprofen. You could do that. And then I said, well, why don't you try a couple of antacids? <laughs> so I gave her three Tums, or Kirkland, Kirkland version of Tums, their antacid, and she chewed them, and it went away. What, did, went, did she eat Duh. anything, or is she still having the issue with her esophagus? Didn't she have? No, a, she a, she a, had that operated on. She hasn't had uh, acid reflux in several years now. Yeah. Wait, what was that, Alex? How did I miss the surgery she got for that? Oh, that that was surgery number fifty-seven while we've been married. <laughs> um, no, that was uh, that was uh, uh, she had. Um, um, there's a flap you have, and if yeah. if, if the flap stays open more than it shuts, uh, you get acid reflux, and you get it terribly. Now, the reason you don't want acid reflux is not only do you get heartburn, uh, but you can get, well, you can get esophageal cancer. In fact, the right. woman who First willed, who willed me her pictures uh, died of esophageal cancer from acid reflux. Yeah, because wow. I'm looking into that now. So she had the operation, surgery, yeah. and uh, it, since then, she has not had one single case of acid reflux. Wow. You know, the older I get, I, I was having some acid reflux problems, but I was eating things that caused the acid reflux. And uh, once I stopped doing that, uh, it, it went away. The When I was a kid, old people used to say, oh, let me have some hot water and lemon. And, uh, you know, they didn't want coffee. And now I know why they didn't want coffee, because, you know, they couldn't handle it. Well, a few days a few, a few days ago, our dear friend Kevin here had an operation. And uh, much like Robert Kraft, he's now waiting for somebody to come by and turn him on. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, but Robert Kraft, aren't they going to give him... Uh, uh, they're going to let uh, let him go uh, as long as he admits to his wrongdoing. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. no. Uh, 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 Kevin went out and had a uh, thing implanted in his back, which is supposed to help do away with pain, and uh, they but they haven't turned it on yet. So mm. yeah. and there's yeah. a control outside the body, right? What? Like you control the 
You control the thing from outside. No, they have to break the stitches open, go inside with their hands, flip a switch, and then close them up again. And putting it. He's got. Do you have rabbit ears? He's he's got a zipper there. Is what he's got. No, it's it. Wear rabbit ears now to increase the signal. And and you'll have a little remote control, won't you? That you can operate it and make it feel better and make it. You know, if you're hurting, yeah. yeah. Show us. Yeah. yeah. It's over there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I was going to show it to you, but it's over it's there. It's wireless. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, how are you feeling? You feeling better? I mean, you, you know, you're yeah, a little better today. Yeah. Yeah. But you actually went you're... to a, a government meeting downtown for what I thought was going to be an hour that turned into three hours. Oh, really? So, you're getting out there. I mean, you're not. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't expecting to be out that long. I mean, I see you here in the big comfy chair, and I just figure that's where you've been sitting all the time now, you know? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, really? Okay. All pretty right. much. Did they give you pain pills? Oh, I already had some. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't need to issue them to me because I already had them. Now, what what, what kind were you what kind were you doing? Because we were talking about pain medication. Yeah, I heard you. Yeah, but yeah. but, but what you dangerous. have to do, but what you have to do to keep your pain medicate, I'm telling you right now, I'm not joking. Fucking pain pills are regulated 10 times more than fucking guns are. Oh, I mean, yeah. yes, you're fucking, yes, you're right. You're right. Very I good know point. What you have to do to get fucking pain pills. And the, the easiest fucking thing you can do is buy them from a fucking drug dealer. I'm fucking sorry. Right. Well, here's the, here, here's the thing. Easy. A lot of doctors. You got you to understand when I lost my, my pain doctor. Uh, what was it about a year and a half two years ago well, it was probably two years ago when EOD. my pain doctor decided to leave and yeah. go to England because all this crap that started mm -hmm. um, I don't know why he left he just upped and said I'm not going to be in the business anymore I'm leaving the country and I don't know why but yeah uh, he they audited in his triple <laughs> scripts he put me in a hell of a, a bind because I had to go to yeah. my doctor and he started right. saying that I couldn't do it and, mm -hmm. then, and then all of a sudden I'm going to another doctor and he said, okay, I'll do it, but I'll only do it for 30 days at a time. And I'm only right. going to do, do it for this. And then he said, I can't keep doing this. And then around town here, I think uh, we had somewhere was about 10 or 11 doctors that got busted. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I couldn't get nothing done in town yeah. here. So I had to go 30 miles away to another doctor. Yeah. And now I have to take piss tests. Yeah. I have to take. Uh, pill count. I have to sign contracts. You're kidding me? That's what I goes have to on count now. Pills, and yep. I do that, and I do all that, and I ha and I'm legal. Does I have Marjorie have to issue you the pain material. pills? <clears> they want to know where all the pills have gone. Does Marjorie have started? to go through a similar thing because of yeah. some of the stuff? Well, that she she has, she has a pain. She has a actually a pain doctor. Yeah, who right. gives her who gives her the drugs? But he 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 he. He uh -huh. monitors her and doesn't allow her to use more than so much. And she's been very good at it. They, they, yeah. but, but here I've got this uh, sleeping pill. It's blue, and I'm trying to remember what it is. There are several of them. Uh, Say Viagra on it? No, no. <laughs> See, Alice. Uh, no, it's sleeping, sleeping pills. Pill? Uh, it, 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 the blue one. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, I forget. Xanax? Adderall? No, no. Xanax is not a sleeping pill, although I use it what for that. What are those that. ones you take all the time? Uh, Ambien, yeah, Ambien, that's what this is. No, this Ambien, is an Ambien. Right. This is the other one. Ambien makes me mean and nasty. Oh, <laughs> Uh No, no. But anyway, I, uh, I, I, I got these at my local Walgreen community, which is a pharmacy-only Walgreens that uh, gives me three months' worth of drugs at a time. This, they would only give me one month, and they would only give me half of the 30 every 15 days mm. and i'm going what do you think i'm going to do swallow the whole fucking bottle no they think you're going to sell them <clears throat> right you know, i mean you know. but that's what i'm saying is it's easier to fucking buy a gun yeah than it is to buy fucking pain medication Maybe like, worse i can go buy 12 fucking guns probably you know tomorrow but right, if I wanted one fucking bottle of fucking 12 pain pills they'd Josh, be like what state are you in again you're a Ohio? criminal are you in Ohio? Or? But it's the yeah, same thing here. Stadium. Doctors are afraid. Well, doctors are afraid of prescribing pain pills because they're afraid of the government coming after them. They have too much. That's they, correct. in other words, you, they don't want any red flags going up. And rather than take a chance, you know, they would rather Marjorie go to a pain doctor. 
to get her pain right. medication than to just yeah, write and, it and up. You have to over a certain time, but like Kevin was saying, if something happens to that guy, you're screwed. I mean, because, you know, my father-in-law, for example, has had three back surgeries. Yeah. I mean, all legit, paid for by his work company and everything, and his pain doctor, so he's been on, you know, Percocets and Vicodins for, I mean, two decades. And he, I mean, so he's basically a person that he cannot stop taking them. I mean, you can't take those kinds of pills for, you know, 15 or 20 years and then just fucking stop. You just can't do it. Mm. I mean, so his pain doctor closed one time just out of the blue. I don't even remember what happened, but he just, he, I mean, literally he went for his appointment and there was a sign on the door that said, you know, we're not open anymore. So he goes home and he calls around, he calls around to some of the other pain doctors and we happen to be over there. And I mean, he's fucking dying. And he's like, I have got to, you know, you don't understand. I've got to get them renewed. And every pain doctor he talked to is like, well, we can see you in two weeks. We can see you in yeah. nine days. Yeah. He's like, you don't understand. I cannot go that long without him. And he finally told one person on the phone, you do understand when I hang up, I'm going to go to a drug dealer and I'm going to buy some fucking pills. And they're like, he, sir, that's your business, not ours. Can he go to an And that is exactly what he fucking did. Matter of fact, Josh? I went and bought the fucking pills for him because I got the hookup. But it's can, can yeah. he, could, could he have gone to an emergency room? Uh, no. Perhaps. And sat for about six hours. And they'll no, give you like weeks. three or four fucking pills to get you through the night, yeah. maybe. And they won't give you that's a, it. Yeah, yeah, and you might have to hurt yourself to do it. Exactly. Well, you know, my question is, whatever happened to the to the ability of the doctor to do what's right for his patient? That's the problem. You know, uh, 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 the fact is, doc, you, you want to hear something really weird? Every year I would go and I would get um, a, a blood draw at my doctor to get my yearly, you know, uh, workup, right? Now, if I want to, like my urologist says, I want you to get uh, another PSA test. I have to go, I can't, he can't do it. It has to be done at a yeah. clinic, at a, at a place that, that, you know, that does this for a business, a lab. Mm -hmm. So I have yep. to go to a lab now to get that blood test done because mm -hmm. uh, except for the one I get a year that my doctor can draw at his office, if he had to draw a second draw at his office, no, I'd have to go down to the lab to have it done. Yeah. What's That's that like bullshit? Passion. Also, also when I had my, colonoscopy the last time the first time i had first couple of times i had it, it was in my doctor's office he had himself a little gurney and he had his nurse and he had the propofol and he put me to sleep and you know did the whole thing this time i had to go to a hospital and a, not a hospital but a, a, a facility for operating and i said to him i said what what'd you do you didn't want to do it in your office anymore he says i can't by law, we can't do it in our office anymore. Right. We have to. Anesthesia. We have to use these clinics. And you know where? What one of those clinics was? The place where Joan Rivers died. Okay. <laughs> you know. Uh, in fact, Marjorie. Marjorie went to have a colonoscopy a couple of months back, and I pull up to where I'm supposed to pick her up, and it's the fucking Joan Rivers Memorial Clinic. You know, where she died. I'm getting a laryngectomy, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Alex, what you're saying is that the cartels are doing a public service for pain medication <laughs> you distribution. You bet your life they are. Yeah. No, I, I, I no, are. I, y the yes, problem. Kevin. Hmm? Yes, Kevin. Yeah, and going back, uh, that one, at one point, one of my doctors actually told me, maybe it'd be easier for you to just go get some, get, get a marijuana card and get and start doing pot. Well, what what about the CBD oil they talk about? No, that's well, a CBD is a little easier, but C, I mean, uh, CBD may actually be a complete <laughs> lie and false yeah. thing. But but they are selling CBD at CVS, wow. starting. Uh, yeah. But but Did it's you hear it, there's some but jelly it's, beans? It, but it's not the internal yeah. stuff. It's the stuff you know, lotions and potions and yeah. rubs yeah, and. There's, there's a guy that's too, selling yeah. CBD. In Jelly Beans. He, he was yeah. one of the founders, I think, of Jelly Belly. Michael Maybe Klein is joining us. Michael, you've, you've called us before, you. haven't you? Huh? Michael Klein. How you doing, Alex? Been you, a while. You, you've called us before, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a, cam have a, Do you have a camera? camera? Is my camera not on? No. I, no. I haven't used Skype in a million years. Oh, so well, go on. down to where there's a picture of a camera and click on that. <clears throat> if you can. There we go. See, now it's hey. whirling around. There you are. Hello, Michael. Good to see you. 
Good to see you. Yeah. And I got my, my radio mic. Wow. Oh, wow, oh, oh really? Nice. Oh, it sounds good. But, I want uh, one of those. And a Talking about uh, indigestion, I had to call in. Oh, okay. It's Alex's waiting room. Well, wait a minute. Before, <laughs> before, before we go to that, though, yeah, Charlene, you have your hand up? Well, no, I had an issue. I was going to bring up right before Phil jumped in with the CBD, I was going to bring it up. Like, um, I think, I don't know what I have. I know I had carpal tunnel and all these things, and I could have arthritis or something. I haven't been diagnosed properly yet. But my hands today, it's raining like crazy. Yeah. And my hands are painful. Yeah. I, yeah that so I, I, like I, I want to go out to the mall yeah. where they have, like, uh, they had testers for the CBD oil. Because I don't believe that the CBD. I'm going to test it. Next there's time a very the good. There, there's a very. There's very like good empirical on. evidence that it doesn't work. It How come all these people that take it say it does? Because it's it's, it's 150 dollars. Yeah, and I'll and I'll, I'll 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 make up. Yeah, a, I'll, I'll tell you, I make up a little sure. potion here at home, <laughs> and I'll charge you 50 bucks, and you rub it on your arthritis, and I'll bet you feel better. Oh yeah, okay. Of course, it's just going to be you know. Some balsamic vinaigrette and oil, ligament. yes, and you'll smell like an Italian restaurant. But what the hell? Uh, yes, Michael. Oh, I, I'm just enjoying the the, the conversation. Uh huh. And a glass of wine. How classy! Yeah, it's a while to find the from right Australia. Uh huh. But the CBD, some of it. Does Are you call? You say you're calling from Australia? No, no, no. no, no the the wine. wine is. Oh, the wine's from Australia. Okay. You're where, where Michael? Where's calling from now? Where? No, I, I'm in I'm in La La Land. In in no, Los Angeles. Oh, yes. Don't hear me. Oh, no, we hear you. Well, congratulations. You state We're just ignoring your you. state now is uh, going to be execution free for a while. Yeah, I don't think I like that. Why? I think uh, we need to get rid of these jerks. Okay. And uh, I I think by now that if they were supposedly innocent they'd be freed by now and there's enough you know aclu type places that are you know helping appealing innocent and the, and the dna get through i think i think uh, they i mean i apparently i didn't realize that the previous governor was against this too so it's about time to get, get well i'll tell you what out. the i'll tell you what the problem is michael especially in california they're, they've got them backed up i mean there may be 800 people on death row now yeah, because uh, because uh, in spite of the fact that they know that they're probably never going to get executed, people put them on death row anyway. Uh, and uh, the problem is, is it costs a fortune to execute somebody. It really does. It's cheaper to More keep than keeping them here. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Between all the legal things the state has to do oh, to continue it, to prosecute it's... and also the execution itself, the amount of money that they're going to spend on that prisoner trying to get him in the, into that death chamber is considerably more than they would spend on him if he just stayed in prison for the rest of his natural life. So, it, you know, it... Give it, some it, heroin. They'll probably take care of it themselves. Well, it's become a big... It's become... A, yeah, right. It's become a big <laughs> expense for the state of, uh, of California. Right. It's cheaper <laughs> It's cheaper to keep them in those prisons. And then they also emptied out the prisons a lot of nonviolent people because the state of California just couldn't afford its penal system, you know. Well, they privatized a lot of it, and uh, people are making a lot of money. I don't know. Uh, do they privatize that much in California? Yeah, I believe they have. I know no, a guy that a makes a fortune. in Victorville. Yeah. That's private. Oh, Victorville, the home of the uh, Roy Rogers Museum. That's right. The hub of the West. That's, uh, it's also <laughs> the home of the plant. No, the hub of the West is Oakland. I thought it changed. That's the armpit of the West. <laughs> No, Oakland. The big news story here in LA is the uh, Disney purchase of Fox and thousands of people being laid off today. Yeah, how many how many people got laid off? I, I saw. Uh, uh, I I know eventually it's going to be over six thousand, but uh, most you know the the Fox lot they're closing the Fox lot in Century City, so. It's it's I mean some big mucky mucks are being laid off. Well, 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 because what what's happened is let me explain to people, Disney bought up Fox, not Fox News. Fox News, yeah, Rupert exactly. Murdoch still owns. It's uh, and it's all under a new. Uh, they it used to be uh, what was it? Fox. It was uh, uh, news. Corp, the right? company used to be called News, news Corp. Corp. It's now being called news Fox Corp. Corp. 
uh, and the rest of it was bought up by Disney, the FX channel, the, the you know the uh, Fox Television Network, all uh, of their movies, all of their TV shows, all, right? And Disney is throwing a lot of it out with the bathwater. I mean, of course they're going to keep Fox TV network on and they want all the rights to Family Guy and all the stuff that's on Fox uh, because they can see what they're going to do next year is they're starting a Disney channel, a Disney pay channel. Uh, and all the stuff they own is going to be on there. You know, so you're going to get all the old episodes of Family Guy are going there and all the old episodes of uh, of, of whatever program you liked on Fox is going to be there. And the Disney, FX show. Uh, Disney movies are going to be on there. Is, if, they, is, if they upload all the back episodes of The Simpsons, it'll crash yep, the Internet. Yep. Yep. They got that's, that was a they'll have that. The, you know, all I'm saying is the reason and Disney, I, I really think that was the. Uh, the hookup that I didn't think should have taken place. I mean, I think Disney owns too much already. You know, wow. if you think about it, what do they got now? They've got they've got all the star they got Pixar. the Star Wars France franchise, ABC. Pixar. They've got m all the Marvel stuff. Okay, I mean and that film, uh, Luke well, Lucas film, but I'm saying Star Wars, the Star oh, Wars stuff. Uh, didn't. Uh, Charlene's right, aren't? Isn't she? Don't they own ABC too? They own ABC. Yeah, they own. ABC. They own a part of ESPN. Right, well, right, they, which has always they, been yeah. Which they that's just why gave they up. That's why they couldn't buy Fox Broadcasting because they yeah. too many stations. So they they just they gave up the Fox Broadcasting. They also gave up seventy one billion dollars. Well, I, I no, I think Murdoch didn't want to get rid of uh, of Fox uh, News. News. Or or the TV stations uh, because he wanted to keep those uh, that he he believed in and uh, there are going to be some changes over there. Uh, it looks like Hannity, when his contract is up next year, is going to be gone. He'll probably uh, go to Blaze TV. No, I, no, I keep Bla getting these. Uh, Bla emails. Blaze is it Blaze is having problems everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I one of the loops. We well, got three. Oh, I got four. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second, Kevin. Uh, put yourself on mute there, Kevin. Yeah, good. Um, um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, uh, you said something about Blaze TV. Oh, Blaze TV. Problems. Yeah, um, uh, they took them off FiOS here and all FiOS stations across the country, uh, and he they just he's having carriage problems really. So, you know, and he can't afford Hannity, you know. So. Uh, but but Hannity is, and it also there's a there's a feeling that uh, the 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 Murdochs are want to get out of the conservative TV business. <laughs> you know, I know they the want, Suns do. The, the Suns absolutely want to. Lachlan, who is running, I think the place um, is kind of uh, he's a what he's not he's not a conservative. He's a, he's a libertarian. Libertarian. Yeah. The other brother is a left winger. So it's it's kind of like there's going to be a lot of changes at Fox, okay, and Fox News. But we're talking about now about the Disney takeover of the Fox <laughs> properties, and as you say, they got rid of all those people, you know. Yeah, yeah I'm, tr I'm trying to find the article. Uh... I mean, I saw somewhere. I, it just went past my eye fast. I think maybe on my watch, you know, uh, and it just said massive layoffs at Fox. And this so is like, not, this, wait, wait a minute, and, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know when the, when the Fox, when they, when Disney took over Fox? No. Yesterday. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yesterday. And today they're letting go of thousands and thousands of people. They're giving him apparently two years severance, one to two years severance. I well, who are they giving one to two years severance? Everybody? Uh, it doesn't really, it says a lot of them. I mean, they're probably yeah, people. Two, two years off work with with pay. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of new drug addicts out there. Ah! <laughs> yeah, have a lot of fun in two years. Of fucking but, pay. but you know, the problem is though that eventually you are going to have to look for work. You know. Yeah, but we can put that off for at least a year and eleven months. I mean, let's, yeah. Now, is that severance or is that just money they're going to give you as long as you're not working? Don't go to work for somebody else. It says uh, staffers. One bright spot for staffers is generous severance packages. Many of the people cut on Thursday will get between a year and two years pay. Okay. Probably salaried people. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was, I, I was deal, uh, better than the deal you got at Sirius. Oh, man. I got a great deal at Sirius. What do you mean? 15 weeks severance you, after working there for nine years? Yeah, that was really yeah. nice. You know. All right. Yeah. And, and if I said anything disparaging about, about them, they, well, they wouldn't give it to me if I didn't sign a, uh, a, a thing. thing saying that I wouldn't file Duncan charges H. against them for age discrimination. Oh, wow. And I said, yeah. well, you yeah. know, you're getting rid of Albert, too. Are you having him sign this? And they said, no. I said, this is ageism. You're having me sign it because of my age. You know, so obviously you are getting rid of me because of my age. No, no, no. But just sign that. Say, but it, we won't give you your severance unless you sign that. Yeah. You, so, ought to, you ought to take them. To so court. I went. They, they no, promised you so, a lunch. No, no. So I went I, and said I would, uh, I would sign it. I said, but I knew to myself that if I went into a court of law and said they told me they wouldn't give me the severance unless I signed it, that that was under duress. Yeah. You know. I mean, and, just uh, don't they owe you a lunch? Oh no! They yeah, my my boss said yeah. Well, after a couple of months, give us a call and let's let's go out and have lunch. We'd like. Well, that was part of the separation deal. I think that uh, uh, yeah, you know you yeah, may no, have no, some that way, damages. No, 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 no. I was thinking they never they never called back and had lunch with me. And I was thinking now it's what six years of uh, just writing my ex program director a little note saying. Uh, for lunch. Saying uh, for no, no, just writing him and saying, "Oh, about that lunch. Never mind. I've eaten already." <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I hear Howard talk about you every once in a while. Does he? Oh, yeah, he yeah. did talk about me one day. I heard something like that, but and I can't remember what it was. He said he grew up listening to you. Did he finally admit to that? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. He yeah. also said he well, something else. Uh, I didn't uh, say that. Uh, um, well, <laughs> and Imus. Yeah. Oh, uh, Imus. No, not yeah, Imus. Yeah. Well, no. you know, uh, I I gotta I gotta tell Howard something. He ain't that young that he was listening to me growing up. <laughs> exactly. You know. Uh, I know he's old. He, was listening, oh, he, he he's, was, he's he was listening to me. He was he was listening to me when he was starting radio, so he could do what I did. Up. What? Uh, I I I was I started listening to you when I was sixteen, uh, at at WMCA. So, you know, uh, Howard is younger than me. Yeah. No, no, I'm I'm no. gonna be sixty five. He's about sixty five. Okay, yeah, he, so he, he could. Howard is in his four, I think. No, I don't think. Oh. What? What'd you, what'd you say? Hey you Siri, are... how old is Howard Stern? Sixty three, sixty four, sixty five, sixty sixty five. Okay, yeah. Mm. I listen to Alex on Live 105. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you listen to me on Live 105 in San Francisco. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is now Alt 105. Yeah. It's and WPLJ, where I, I, where I worked here for a couple, for about six something. years on radio in New York, WPLJ. That's uh, what I And I met you when you It's were just WPLJ. been sold to a religious organization. Uh, who's they didn't gonna, keep you. Who's going to turn it into into church music? What was Live 105 before that? When you were with Joe Rogalski? Rogalski? Uh, he, he was on. Oh, the Joe Rogalski. Well, no, jo Joe Rogalski. Yes, Joe Rogalski was with me at the Quake. He couldn't yeah, follow yeah. me to Live 105 because he was un still under contract, and I and I was being bought out. Okay. So they kind of separated us, and I couldn't take him with me to to uh, no. I, I was that was the quake. I couldn't take him to live 105. So they had a newswoman named Lori Thompson, and they said, "Would you like to give her a chance?" She's been doing the morning show, and I said, "I don't want to put anybody out of work." So and she became my newswoman for and my my sidekick for the better part of 11 years. You know? Yeah, Lori was great. I have a photo of her sitting on the pot doing the newscast. No, really. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. You know that Joe Rogelski is in Mendocino? Yeah, or, no, he's uh, in, right. uh, he's in, uh, uh, what's that town up there? It's it's, it's up there, though. It's not Mendocino. It's uh, another one. Kaya? Uh, no. Uh, it starts with an M. Uh, no. 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 You're thinking, uh, no, it's not Mendocino. Uh, you no, know, it's, uh, it's. Said? No, no, it's up, up uh, north of Marin. I'm oh, northern Marin? No, no, it's not northern Marin. On the Marin. coast. No, it's way up. 
It's way up. Yeah. It's up. It's up. It well, may it's be in California. It may be in Mendocino, but I'm trying to remember what the name of the Eureka? station is. I think it might be Eureka. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he, he went to work up there. And I, in I'm fact, glad he's still working. I talked to him about a year ago. Really? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we hadn't spoken. That, that Mark Thompson took over Ron Owen's spot on uh, KGO. Huh? Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Remember, used to do the weather up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's probably they probably have him coming from some other station where he's doing the show there too. Yeah, because I thought he was down in L.A. or something. Yeah, like he was on KFI, but he's moving to San Fran. Um, well, maybe he's not. Maybe he's still doing it at KFI. Yeah, he's probably doing a. You know, what's what's he's only doing KFI once one night a week. Uh, so. No. Anyway, um, you know. Um, that that the, the KGO is a lost cause now as a radio station. Yeah, they've gone downhill. Now, Joe Rogelski is a, at a radio station called The Coast FM. Yes. K O Z T. Yeah. Um, I can't see what city. It's uh, weed. No, not weed. Not weed. Uh, <laughs> it's in London. Fort Bragg. Fort Bragg. Okay. There you go. Yeah. There is a city up in uh, Northern California called Weed. It's almost right at the border. Yeah. Yeah, I got a T-shirt from the fire department, weed fire department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, uh, I had a friend who owned a movie theater in Weed, and I used About to go up the there, reason. and he taught me. I learned it was a whole thing. I learned how to, uh, how to, how to run projectors and change used, reels and things like that. Yeah, I used to do that at Cal State Long Beach. I yeah, projectors. Yeah. Remember when you had the dots on the screen? On the, on the, on the, uh, yeah. And you have, you have a hand on one projector and a hand on the other projector, and you see the dots. You. I it, thought it was. Well, a what you do is you is, it was is a circle. Thirty seconds. And it yeah, yeah. Thirty seconds before you, you get right. a flash. Then right. at ten seconds, you get another dot, and you start both the projectors. And when you see the third dot come up ten seconds later, boom! You switch uh, projectors. Yep. You could yeah. fuck that up really easily <laughs> if you didn't know what you were doing, you know. But uh, anyway, um, so um, uh, uh, we're uh, we're in the midst of uh, of, of uh, uh, the Mueller probe is almost almost wrapping up. Now, do you think? something really is going to come out of this or is we're ever we we already know everything and you know it's there's not going to be any surprises trump's not going to get impeached and it's just gonna well i think what's going to happen is i think that it's going to be um there there's a good chance it could go either way they could say we didn't find as much as uh, we thought there was there and uh um you know, or it may come out that the, you know, the um, uh, uh, president's committee to elect him uh, was canoodling with the Russians. We're, we're losing your head, Charlene. What's happening? I know. It's, it's the phone thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need uh, a holder. <laughs> yeah, you should get a holder or something. The you. L.A. Times uh, had an article the other day about uh, what we know now already. Yeah. And 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 it, there's there's tons of indictments already and yeah. and i don't know what more you know they're going to be able to to show the collusion in russia well i don't, I don't think i see i don't think that Mueller is was setting out to prove anything he was out to find out what went on okay and if there was russian collusion in the election from wherever that might have come from it might not have come from the president it might not have come from his committee, but it, it was there. What, what what was the depth of 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 it came all of from this? Hillary Clinton and the DNC? No, that's where it came from. Oh, okay, Phil. Good. I'm glad you it got. I'm glad you solved that and one they for. They paid us. for the dossier. I see. They paid for the dossier. All right. Okay. Yeah. Go oh, ahead. Eat. Drink way. the Kool Aid, Phil. Drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, I don't. I don't know the way it's going to come out. I think that what, however it comes out, supposedly the president is ready with his his side of the story, so to speak. Oh, I'm yeah, sure he but, has his tweets written already. Oh yeah, I don't it, think William Barr is going to, uh, you know, acquiesce to Trump's wishes. I think he's an upstanding guy with a lifetime 
doing of doing the right thing. And uh, he's going to do I the disagree. right thing. I disagree. No matter what I, I disagree Trump with wants. you. There was every indication that he would he would be Trump's little lapdog because of what Trump had to say the other day. Oh, sure. If it comes out, uh, I want everything released. Of course, that's going to be up to Barr. It's the truth. And that made no And, and it wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And that made me think. Yeah, he's saying I'm all for everything coming out, but he knows the bar is going to stonewall a lot of it. Uh, no, you're, you're 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 reading things into well, this. Well, we'll see. We'll uh, see what happens, that, Phil. No, have no basis in fact. Let bar do that. We'll, we'll it see. It has no we'll, basis in fact. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yes, it has basis in fact. Okay, Chief. Because Trump because because the president is a lying fuck. You know, <laughs> we yeah. know that. You even know he's a liar. No, I just think he. Has his side of the story. I see. No, <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and, and, and you know, and, and I suppose your attitude about Hitler is he was just cranky now and then. No, but you know, Trump is as clean as driven snow. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, even Dennis Miller admits Trump's a liar. Somehow, I feel that if Hitler had met you before he met all the other Jews, he would have gone easier on them. Uh, <laughs> No, I would have been armed. He would have been satisfied. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, no, it, you know, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I, I, I hope, uh, we, I, I hope that we find that he had his finger in the cookie jar and uh, we got him dead to rights. And uh, I, I don't say impeach him. I say just put him on, you know, time out. You know, uh, and if they don't have anything and they don't. Uh, uh, find anything on him? Are you going to support his? Do you uh, think that's efforts? going to happen, Phil? Yes, I do. What no, do you? No, it, no. It, there, there is a middle ground. It's not you know black or white. Either they won't find anything, or they'll find everything. I think they're going to find a few things that really implicate him. And you know what? You know, I think it's going to put his 2020 campaign on notice. Yeah. Well, uh, with the people that are on the Democratic side that are going to try to run against him. I have a feeling we have uh, another. I term think for I think Trump. I think Kamala Harris, if she just flashes a tit, will win that election. I I was going to ask you, Alex. I really like Kamala Harris. Yeah, I do. But too. Who's going to be her running mate? Uh, but, but also, I like Klobuchar Damn. too. Klobuchar is very smart. You know, um, I, you know, it's too early. You know, they say Joe Biden is thinking of what's her name, the woman who lost uh, for governor Dunn. Abrams. Abrams. Um, uh, Stacy Abrams. Abrams. Like, he's yeah, thinking, he, he's thinking of announcing that when if he announces his run for the office, that he's going to uh, say that he's going to make Stacy Abrams his vice president. Isn't and everybody's pandering? saying this is a little early, isn't it? You know, that's 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 pandering to you know. Uh, oh, and stereo. I think that's as racist well, as you can. Uh, get. Well, as I said last night. You know, the, the idea that people get asked the question, would you put a woman in there? Would you put a black person in there? No, I'm going to put the best person who can do the job. And if it's another exactly. guy, white guy like me, then it's going to be another white guy like me. And if it's a woman, then it will be a woman. And if it's a black guy, it'll be a black guy. That is the correct answer. He, You know, he I, I just think that the other, anything mm -hmm. else is pandering and being racist and sexist. I can't wait till he starts making more gaffes. You know, I mean, he he started he started gaps already. You know, I'm the yeah. most. I'm going to make an out. I'm going to make an outside running. prediction here. I'm going to make yeah. an out, and it's it's a real outside prediction. I don't think he's going to run. Biden? Yeah. Uh, I think you're right. I think he's going to look at all of this and say, my chances aren't that great. You know, because I'm in a field that's very progressive which is what the party wants right now. And I don't fit that category. Plus, I've got years and years and years of baggage. All they have, to, all they the have to show is him at the, uh, at the hearings with, uh, what's her name, the, uh, the, um, uh, the Supreme Court hearings with... Yeah. Uh, oh, with uh, Thomas? With Thomas, Clarence Thomas. Uh, uh, Anita Hill, yeah. Yeah, Anita Hill. All they have to do is show him in the Anita Hill thing, and he's lost all the women in America. You know, uh, the uh, the other thing is that jo you know Joe Biden has has a lot of baggage, like you said. And well, I he has a lot of baggage because he has a lot Trump, of years of public service. Right. Okay, Trump is going to rip him every side but Tuesday. You know, there's no yeah. way 
Trump has more baggage in the last two years than Biden will ever. Have. Yes, you're well, right. You're Trump absolutely right. Trump has been doing everything he said no, but, he would but, do. But, no, no, he did everything. Yes, you yes. don't like it. And the reason we voted, people voted for him, is they said, ah, he won't do that. Yeah. No, yeah. no, you said he won't do that. I, you know, I was happy he did it. That's what I. Oh wanted. yeah, you're happy your taxes are going to go up this year, Phil. You know. Uh, uh, blah, blah, he's blah, doing blah. what he did was he lowered he made he made things I believe more simple because he lowered the tax rates, but uh, but uh, he got rid of a number of loopholes. You know our tax system. So it all comes out even, doesn't it, Phil? For what uh, the, the the rich? No, for everyone. No, ever ever no got no, a, a Phil. Tax rate no, 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 oh, no. People didn't. people are going to their accountants and coming out crying. Yeah, especially the ones in New York that are paying such high taxes. How do you like those high taxes? The property taxes that are now capped at what ten thousand bucks. Hey, you know the only the only the only place I get money back from anymore is the state, not the Fed. Uh-oh. And the state, I get back a couple of thousand every year. That, yeah, that well, you don't own any property. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, no, well, that's true. We, uh, we do own uh, property. Owns Absolutely, a piece of property. Yeah, well, uh, that's us. Now about my yeah. taxes. But all you can do is depreciate that because it's a rental. No, you don't depreciate at all. There's only so much you no, can do. over 40 years, I think. Yeah. Are we going to live that long? Well, uh, uh, that's the government's hoping not. Yeah. You know, but, that's but, why they're, but, they're the, but the point I'm making, it making Phil, taxes is... Went up you, we, and then Trump's new plan. My yeah. taxes went up dramatically. A bunch of people's taxes uh, went can up. Can you give us an idea yeah, of how they went up? People. Wait a minute. Can you give us an idea how they went up? How much they went up? Or what? Uh, Just... A, for me personally, about four or five thousand dollars. Did you make uh, more money? No, no. Um, you have a payment. There plan? was uh, okay. Trump got rid of the non-reimbursed business expenses, uh, employee business expenses, which is what I used being an employee, um, and now I'm no longer able to do that. So I had to incorporate, and now that I'm incorporated, a lot of my clients they would rather pay me as an employee than a corporation because of Apparently, the IRS is going after employers because some of these miscategorizing as an employee yeah. as an employee uh, as a ten ninety nine. They're playing. I mean, like I said, I'm incorporated. I, I I pay myself a salary, but apparently, if they find out that this person wasn't paying any taxes, they can go after the employer. Well, there there's there's a there's a number of of points that if you meet those things, you are truly a ten ninety nine. Uh, a person, and if you don't, Sandra. then you're you're a W uh, two employee. Uh, do you do you have a service that uh, you totally provide and, and and is independent of the company? Do they buy you business cards? Do they give you a uniform? Do, you know, do they tell you when to show up and where to go and what to do? Nope. No, well, no, then no. then you're an independent contractor. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, 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 Charlene. Well, since it's a tax clinic here, you know, it's an accountant office now. Um, I was just thinking about this. Like, if you sell on eBay, um, supposedly I heard now that you get you're like a ten ninety nine, right? Mm-hmm. So I, what what happens if you sell like a thousand dollars worth of stuff on eBay? The IRS is going to get a copy. You're going to get a copy. But what do they do to you if you uh, sold on eBay and you didn't report it, like on your taxes? Well, what do you mean? Audited? Uh, how how are you going to get your uh, information? You you may you make a sale to somebody, and they're going to no, get no, your no, no, no. your EIN number, they, or they're going to get your they, social they, security they number. They reports your income. No no no, that's what I hear. That like you'll get a report of what you sell per year on eBay. eBay keeps track of it. Like oh, well, they're coming for you, Charlene. Well, I they're coming for me. Yeah, because whatever. Yeah. I worked in taxes, and anything over ten dollars, if you get a ten ninety nine. They get a 1099, the IRS, and they could audit you on that. You know, you're not supposed to get a 1099. Six hundred dollars. Six hundred. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's six hundred, not ten for 1099. Yeah, yeah but the okay. fact of the yeah, matter that's, is, that's for the work, fact of the matter is, are you are you talking about if if you sell something on eBay, uh, you have to pay taxes on the on the money you make off you're of that? And absolutely, the government taxes, the right? government wants so. ta- taxes on anything you make. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think but eBay is reporting money. A sale. 
What well, if you bought something for a thousand dollars and you sell it for seven hundred dollars, yeah, which is yeah. usually usually the case with anything I sell on eBay? Well, uh, they, they were, you know, they, you're very bad at that. Yeah, of course I am. Either <laughs> well, that or I sell it to you. <laughs> and let go doesn't report or something. That's what I heard. Yeah, and then it, it immediately back. breaks. You know, mm -hmm. so I mean, uh, yeah. so I get to well, take it off my taxes. <laughs> Yeah, well, but, you know, I did send you that rug. If you rub it, it'll grow. Yeah, it's over here. Uh, Marjorie's using it, actually. Uh, um, uh, but that's how, like, uh, we've just been joined by Patrick, internet, right? uh, who's who's here hey. for a few moments. Hi, Patrick. I, I told you I was going to Yeah. I told you I was going to call, so. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you're a man of your word. I, I try to be. I had a bunch of shit happen again tonight, and... I still added ten minutes in there at least. Call so. Would yeah. you spill something? Uh actually, and it, it, it very similar. Um, I was in the shower, and the shower curtain um, wasn't quite where it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I, it, basically, a, a little bit of a pool in my bathroom Ooh. where my wheelchair sits. So I got to try to wheel out. It's like wheeling on ice. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah, pardon I, me for laughing, but I'm 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 thinking about it now. <laughs> with you trying to move the wheels and they're just turning around but not going anywhere. That, that's why I said like ice because it's a good visual. You can you can imagine mm -hmm. what it's like. So I had to kind of shimmy my way onto dry uh, tiles and then wipe it up and all that. So anyway, I'm here for a couple minutes and then I'll aggravate Jack. <laughs> He'll aggravate Jack. <laughs> now the only one that can really aggravate him is Phil, and then he he his voice goes up about ten octaves. <laughs> yeah, he always wants to fight. Start sweating. <laughs> Let's go outside and duke this out. <laughs> well, you know, oh, I mean, my lawn. but we'll we'll see what it, we'll see what happens with the with the whole Trump thing. I I am not uh, I'm I'm not expecting that it's necessarily going to be. Horrible for Trump, but I think even if it's only mildly critical of Trump, he's going to go apoplectic, you know. No, uh, I think he's going to go after everybody that accused him and, and say, see, nothing. Well, he's, he, yeah. what he's going to do is um, it, this thing could Trump say, yes, we got the guy dead to rights. We saw him blowing a Russian diplomat, you know, yeah. and he will somehow parse it by saying, see, I was exonerated. All I did was blow a diplomat. You know? Exactly, <laughs> and exactly. that's not you collusion. Know, that's stuff, not collusion. This John McCain stuff. He's going I, I, I wish he'd drop yeah. that. It, well, Dang the that. McCain stuff he's is real. On something, Phil. This is silly. He's, he's attacking a dead man. Well, you know, yeah, okay. The guy voted against his repeal and replace. Uh, you know, and and he said some disparaging things. It's done. But he's talking yeah. like he's still with but us or something. The guy, he's still a hero. The guy was a hero, you know. And mm -hmm. now he might have been shot down, but he spent all those years in a con in a in a prison camp. He and was shot so, down because he's a loser. No, but when he was offered the ability, because his dad was an admiral, yeah, to to go to home, go said, home go. Yeah. he said he wouldn't go unless yeah. the other ones went. The because man is a hero player. in my yeah. eyes. Yeah, he, he, he was. I don't agree with him on what he, he did, caught. but he, he was a hero. Well, you know, I mean, I, 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 well, uh, years ago when I was talking about McCain, I said, what was he ever famous for? I guess he was famous for getting caught, you know, uh, or being, you know, his plane coming down. You know, he lost two planes, by the way, in his time. He was he was not good yeah, with government. Probably one of those Boeing Max He was not planes. good with, with, with government issue. Yes, uh, Patrick. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to bring up McCain, but the other thing that I wish that Trump would get grow up on is Kellyanne Conway's husband. <laughs> yeah. oh, nobody's ever heard of that guy. Nobody gives a shit what their infighting is. And Trump, I mean, you got Kellyanne defending the president, saying <laughs> what expect him to do when he's called you know, mentally unstable, and then they, that was the dumbest. Out of everything in this presidency, in my opinion, this was the most stupid, mm. uh, small thing well, that we, he could have yeah. gone after and made it national. 
Well, you said, what do you expect him to do when somebody calls him uh, mentally... <coughs> mentally uh, unstable. Uh, mentally unstable, and what I expect him to do is to go see a shrink. Yeah. Well, that, that marriage is a lesson read, to the Read country. the damn definition. <laughs> you know, we can love each other and still get along with our differences, you know? Yeah. Alex. Yeah. Yeah. She's I making so much money, he loves her it. key to the house. Didn't he get psychologically profiled when he first got in or something? No. Remember that? I don't when think that so. A big thing? I don't think so. There have been... He had a medical examination. They have a medical oh, examination, medical? but... I thought it was psychological. They have a too. physical examination. And his... Uh, and the doctor said he was in great shape. Look yeah, at him. Yeah, look at Dr. Ronnie Jackson to get him to do it, and then it'll well, be great. The guys that just did it at uh, Walter Reed w weren't the uh, Jackson uh, uh, guy. It was, uh, you know, Army doctors, and they yeah, gave they clean bill of health. What did they do to check him? Drop him out of the second floor and see if he'd survived? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, come on. You're you, you going to tell me with all that weight on him that he's healthy? Uh, he's okay. Yeah. Hey, you know, you're talking to a bunch of people that are, you know have a little bit of weight on them, except Charlie and you know and me Patrick. and me. I, I don't claim to be 139 pounds. And me and me. I'm I'm yeah. You know, I'm I'm just yeah. Slow. What? It's uh, mirrors. No, it's not it's mirrors. mirrors. Look at yeah. this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I lost weight, Phil. Everybody stand up and <laughs> look yeah. at me. Look at me. Uh, <laughs> hey. I mean, uh, I you know, it. look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look Jesus, at that. He didn't stand that. up huh? like that. I would have never known he had it. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Does anyone remember uh, Buster Crab years and years when I was Oh, yeah. Kid? Yeah. The, the, the guy who kicked sand in his face? No, the, you're, that's Charles Atlas. Charles Atlas. Yeah. Uh, Buster, Buster Crab was, was, was Tarzan, he, wasn't he? he? No. Well, he played Tarzan once or twice. But he was uh, Flash Gordon, and he was Buck Rogers. And, I always thought uh, that was so funny when I was a kid. There was a commercial. got a big corporation up front. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, no, but there, uh, there a, a couple of thin people are not overweight. Charlie isn't overweight. Uh, Michael, you look to be in good shape, fairly. Me? Are you? Well, he's got, I, I, he's got what I got. Oh, you got that. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, how one, many months, uh, Michael? Hey, how many? I'm, I'm due in three. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, the best thing I ever did recently was lose that weight. You know, to, to, so please give me credit for that, Phil. Weight matter. Oh, Phil. Oh, Phil. Doctor Bennett in the waiting room. They yeah. keep telling me that the problem with my feet and everything that I. I have the same thing you have, like the tingling and the neuropathy. Neuropathy, is, yeah. They're telling me it's my weight. Do you think that's true? In your case, it could be the weight. You know, have I don't you know. Had uh, your sugar checked? It, well, it, I have, you have um, diabetes. Six point like two or something. Six point my two. Do, my diabetes. doctor couldn't figure out what's causing it. He thinks, in my case, my neuropathy is being caused by a pinched nerve in my back. Well, I went to the other guy, and he found sciatica mm -hmm. and something with the discs. Yeah. You know? Well, that can, wait, wait can cause that. Yes, but Patrick, Patrick's got his hand up. My neuropathy is caused by paralysis. So. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <right. laughs> I get the check. Yeah. Are, are you uh, are you taking anything for that? No. <laughs> I just live with it. Uh, yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, he uh, he just bought himself a wheelchair so he could get around. You know, yeah, yeah uh, he was just trying to get sympathy from other people. Yeah, and and those parking places that too. You know, <laughs> I think you ought to get one of those wheelchairs like that guy I know. It, yeah. it climbs stairs. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing uh, yeah. What, what this thing does. Hey, yeah, listen, up, uh, down. There, what? Hmm? There, you had, want to say something quickly, Patrick? I said I think Bill sent me a link to them. Yeah. 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 Anyway, hey, listen, uh, we've run out of time here, uh, but it's been a pleasant, wonderful evening with, uh, of course, Phil Meyer and Charlene yeah, Martinez night, right? and Michael Klein <laughs> and, of course, the, the professor, Josh Wheeler, Kevin Stopper. Of course, Patrick is in here a little bit late. Charlie, thank you so much for calling. And uh, we lost somebody else, didn't we? Did we? Uh -huh. Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, then we, we, we just lost Charlie. He kind of yeah. got out of here. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it. Hey, Michael, call us more often, will you? I will. 
I Please. Will. I mean, I'm uh, number one, you got a great picture coming <laughs> in, and it sounds great, and you're intelligent, and I like that. Hey. Hey. You know, we could use more of that, and less of what's on the other side of the yeah. screen. Sorry, sorry, but anyway, no. hey, everybody. <laughs> No extra charge. You know I love you, Phil. Everybody give a big wave goodbye to our audience out there, and I'll wave back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Citizen Panel. That's how it's done. And a whole night's worth of Citizen Panel, which is also very, very, very good. Anyway, it's good discussion tonight. Uh, listen, I'm out of here now, and up next uh, on most of these gab nets, uh, is uh, the intersection with uh, Jack Bishop. And uh, then tomorrow night at uh, 9.30 Eastern Time, it's the exchange with uh, Damian Chaplin. And I'll be back again tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>